All right. So now if you're following along with your notes, we are on Roman numeral number two. We're going to start talking about the action potential. So remember an action potential is the electrical communication signal that's used by neurons in the nervous system. And neurons are able to generate this electrical signal or an action potential because of a very special property of the plasma membrane. So if we were to take a look at a neuron here and just do a little close up and enlarge what an axon is, looks like, we're gonna see that there is actually a electrical charge to the plasma membrane. If we take a look at the charge right along the specific areas of the plasma membrane, we're gonna see outside of the axon or the extracellular environment has a positive charge. The interior of the axon or intracellular environment has a negative charge. It is this separation of charges, the separation from positive and negative separated by that plasma membrane that allows the axon or more broadly the neuron to generate an electrical signal. When you start to have movement of these positive and negative charges, it acts just like a battery um, and that's going to generate that electrical communication, right? So if we're gonna take a closer look inside of the axon, we can see that the charge, kind of the resting charge inside of that axon is negative 70 millivolts, all right? So this has a net negative charge to it compared to the outside, which is positively charged. Now, the reason why we have this separation of charges is because of the various ions and proteins that are present both inside and outside of the cell, right? So here we have our plasma membrane. This is a, it's still a close up of the axon, right? Outside of the cell, we have a variety of both positively and negatively charged ions, which include sodium, potassium, chloride. Um, however, a lot of these positively charged ions, specifically, um, sodium kind of line up along the plasma membrane, right? And in general, you're going to have a net positive charge. There are more positively charged ions than negative on the outside of the cell, which is why you have a net positive charge outside of the plasma membrane. Now, inside of the cell, in the cytosol, you're going to have the presence of these negatively charged proteins. Remember, these guys are big. And the job of the plasma membrane is to prevent the loss or entry of substances that shouldn't be moving in and out of the cell. Remember, the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. These proteins are quite large. Um, they help to keep the volume of water inside of the cell sufficient. So the cell can't really lose these, right? So it does that by not creating any avenue or any channels for these proteins to leave, right? These are always inside of the cell. And since they are negatively charged, that is going to give an overall negative charge to the inside of the cell compared to positively charged ions you see here. So the presence of these proteins along with other both positively and negatively charged ions will give a net charge of negative 70 on the inside of that axon, all right? This net charge of negative 70 inside of the axon is called the resting membrane potential. Okay, so the resting membrane potential refers to when a neuron is at rest, it is not actively producing any electrical or chemical signaling. Its resting potential is negative 70 on the inside. And again, that is due to the presence of these um, charged ions as well as the negatively charged proteins, all right? So the resting membrane potential, which again is equivalent to negative 70 millivolts, is accomplished by the presence of a very special pump called the sodium-potassium pump. 
All right, so let's take a look at how the cell can keep its interior at negative 70. membranes have proteins embedded inside which create ion channels right so uh, since the plasma membrane is selectively permeable and charged ions can't freely flow across the plasma membrane by simple diffusion right the plasma membrane has to have specific channels that allows for these ions to move in and out of the cell. And you need to have these channels because you can't have the movement of these ions happening willy-nilly, right? Remember, ions are always going to move along their concentration gradient from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So if there was no barrier to prevent that movement, you would completely lose all of the ions um, that the cell needs inside. So that's why you have these ion channels that are guarded by the cell and only open up when needed, all right? So the resting membrane potential of a neuron is established and maintained by the sodium potassium pump. We talked about the sodium potassium pump a little bit when we were uh, on chapter two. Um, this is a form of active transport, okay? It requires ATP, a form of energy. And this ATP is being used by the pump because you are moving ions against their concentration gradient, okay? So let's take a look at how the concentration gradients are established, and then we'll get into a little bit more detail about the sodium potassium pump. So in general, the neuron has a higher concentration of potassium ions inside of the cell compared to outside of the cell. This is opposed to the sodium ion, which has a higher concentration outside of the cell compared to inside of the cell. So if given free reign, these potassium ions are going to want to move along their concentration gradient, which is moving through the channel and out of the cell from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. They want their space. They need a little bit of wiggle room, all right? So these potassium ion channels are inserted in the plasma membrane of a neuron. When open, the potassium freely flows along their concentration gradient and moves out of the cell through the ion channel. Now, the movement of these negatively charged potassium ions, I mean, excuse me, positively charged potassium ions are going to decrease the resting membrane potential. If you lose positively charged ions, then the interior of the cell will become more negative, all right? So that brings us away from the resting membrane potential, all right? However, if you have the movement of these sodium ions into the cell, that can help to bring it back towards negative 70, which sounds all well and fine, but then you have uh, an incorrect distribution of ions across this plasma membrane. So let's take a look at the sodium concentrations both inside and outside of the cell. Outside of the cell, you have a high sodium ion concentration. Inside of the cell, very low concentration, all right? So when these sodium ion channels are open, you're gonna have a free movement or diffusion of sodium ions down their concentration gradient, which in this case would be moving into the cell, all right? Now, this is not a great situation for the cell because if they have not enough sodium ions outside of the cell and not enough potassium ions inside the cell, the neuron is not able to generate an action potential. So this is where the sodium potassium pump comes in, all right? The sodium potassium pump is going to redistribute or reset ions um, back to their original space across the plasma membrane. 
Now remember, this is a form of active transportation because this requires energy. You're moving sodium ions back into an area of high concentration, okay? It's going against the concentration gradient. So um, when the sodium potassium pump is activated, it is going to move three sodium ions out of the cell back into the extracellular environment. And in exchange, it is going to move two potassium ions back into the cell, again, against its concentration gradient, okay? So the movement of these ions back into their original positions is what maintains that resting membrane potential. This is what maintains the ability for an, a neuron to generate an electrical signal at any given time. If you had the incorrect distribution of these ions, let's say all your sodium ions were inside of the cell, all your potassium ions were outside of the cell, then you would not be able to generate a, an electrical signal, okay? So that's what we're referring to as the resting membrane potential. It is the potential to generate an electrical signal at a given time. And that can only be accomplished when the ions are in the correct position, and that position or distribution of the ions is maintained by this sodium potassium pump, all right? So remember how many ions move in, how many ions move out, and what um, the movement of ions are. Sodium ions are moving into the cell, potassium ions are moving out of the cell, okay? So now that we understand the distribution of ions across the plasma membrane, we're gonna take a closer look at how the movement of these ions into and out of the cell can change the potential and lead us up to the generation of an electrical signal.